I'm going to talk to you about activism in, in Latin America, but specifically the role of science communication and NGOs in social environmental conflicts. Uh, this is a picture from uh, El Dorado dos Carajais. It's from the middle. It's from the middle 90s. Um, in this conflict, uh, 19 activists or yeah, uh, yeah, activists from the um, landless workers uh, movement were killed. Um, and I'm going to tell you later why, why the conflicts have now a different, a different uh, perspective. So this is me, uh, Diogo Lopez Oliveira. I'm an adjunct professor at Federal University of Campina Grande. It's a small state in northeastern Brazil, uh, a very poor one. And I'm visiting professor here at Cornell University. Here you have my contact. Um, and, I will, and I'll be more than glad to receive your comments. Um, I'd like to, to, to spend our time together more than the 40, 40 minutes that I, I, I have with you. Uh, I'm going to start my presentation using a fragment from a very important, um, um, a very important report. Uh, made by Young and Medeiros, uh, it's it's about the the it's called how valuable is the green. So they 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 had a, a very important um, a very important um, study about how important how how valuable are the natural reserves the national reserves in Brazil. Uh, so they say, despite of all effort, however, a, mis a misinterpretation still prevails that, the, polis uh, the, that the, the policy of creating protected areas represents a barrier to development since productive activities such as mining, agriculture, livestock, power generation, road construction, they are some of the reasons of uh, the social environmental conflicts among others, are incompatible with nature conser conservation and that investments made in this regard do not return tangible benefits for society. This false dilemma, dilemma <clears throat> is spread by the significant lack of systematic data and information about the real role of protected areas in providing goods and services that directly or indirectly uh, contribute to the economic and social development of the country. So, my main interest, my main, my main interest when I when I started studying this uh, this issue was to understand how science uh, could be uh, so how NGOs use science um, as a tool for uh, raise awareness or to make contact with society and make people understand how important is uh, uh, the debate about <clears throat> environment. So, and here I, I, I'm using uh, David Kopenawa, he's a Yanomami shaman. And in a book called uh, the, the, Falling, the Falling Sky, he says, the forest is alive. It can only die if the, white, if the white people persist in destroying it. If they succeed, the rivers will disappear on the ground, the soil will crumble, the trees will shrivel up, and the stones will crack in the heat. The dried up earth will become empty and silent. The Shapiro spirits uh, who came down from the mountains to play on their mirrors in the forest will escape far away. Their shaman fathers will no longer be able to call them and make them dance to protect us. They will be powerless to repeal the, the epidemic fumes which devour us. They will no longer be able to hold back the evils, the evil beings, who will turn the forest to chaos. We will die one after the other, the white people as, as well as us. All the shamans will finally perish, finally perish. Then if, no one, if none of them survive to hold it up, the sky will fall. I like this fragment because there is poetry, there is science, there is religion. Uh, and that's one of, the, one, of, one of the most important, I would say, uh, um, so the traditional communities are important, not, not as only because they are human beings, but because they carry a lot of information, a lot of traditions, a lot of habits, uh, 
uh, in the la in, uh, so for for centuries. So it's it's one of the valuable things that we have to 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 think when we when we when you're talking about uh, social environmental conflicts. So a starting point. Uh, in 2018, so last year, during the conference Public Communication of Science and Technology in Dunedin, New Zealand, Professor Bruce Lewenstein pointed the lack of participation of NGOs in the previous meetings. And the previous meetings are here. Uh, we are preparing a panel next year in, um, in Dunedin, Scotland. Uh, because we want to put the NGOs in, so to, to make them part of the, of the debate on science communication and, and technology. So we decided to study through several articles the relationship of science communication with environmental activism and social movements in Latin America from an overview study case to, uh, from an overview study to case studies in particular. So according to the Global Witness reports, Global Witness is a very famous uh, NGO, a British NGO, almost 1,600 1, land and environmental activists, mainly peasants, indigenous people, and members of traditional communities in conflictual areas lost their lives between 2002 and 2018. Almost three times the rest of the world. So Latin America is one of the one of the places where uh, most environmental activists uh, are killed. So understand the use of scientific storytelling by NGOs and activists to defend their point of view and to influence public opinion towards their, their position. So we, we noticed that, of course, many NGOs work with um, uh, science. So they deal with science. They have a lot of uh, uh, academics working with them. Uh, and we notice that it, the science is, is, is an important tool to convince people. So we have, so we are, what we are saying is not only because we are passionate, uh, but because it relies on, on science. So how activists and journalists use science communication as a tool for uh, telling stories about, about environmental conflicts that frequent, frequently turn violent. This is some of our questions. How do uh, NGOs use science and science communication to sustain their, point, their positions towards the public opinion? Can science communication play a role in, reduce, in reducing social environmental conflicts? That's, that's, those are some of the questions we are trying to, to answer. Oh, sorry. And uh, the knowledge presented traditional communities combined with formal knowledge uh, possible, uh, it's, it's possible to empower activist speech. So we noticed that some, some leaders in the traditional communities, they have this background, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, information about habits, about the land, about how valuable is the land, but they also combine this knowledge with formal, uh, formal science. So uh, they, they are interested to, 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 in the relationship with different uh, universities, research uh, institutions, and so on. Uh, here, I, can, I would like to show you a good, a very good tool to understand socio, so environmental conflicts uh, in the world. Uh, it's the Environmental Justice Atlas. Uh, it's uh, empowered by uh, uh, University of uh, Barcelona. Uh, the, the, the European Union is also uh, uh, behind this, uh, this tool. So according to Environmental Justice Atlas, there are 832 social environmental conflicts in Latin America, over 2,865 cases in the world. The region is responsible for almost 24%. Here you have a legend. So uh, nuclear, mineral oils, uh, uh, waste management, biomass, uh, and here you have the, the references. Uh, this is, uh, so this table is about the most killing countries for environmental defenders. These are the victims in the last uh, 17 years. So Brazil is by far the country uh, who kills more environmental conflict, uh, environmental defenders. 
uh, followed by the Philippines. Uh, I've, I've marked the, the countries from Latin America. So Colombia, Honduras, Mexico, Peru, Guatemala, Nicaragua. So there are only three countries uh, uh, among the 10 most uh, uh, dangerous for environmental defenders. Only the Philippines, India, and the uh, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo there, so only them are not from, from Latin America. Uh, so this is another, so another perspective of the same, the same map. You can see Brazil is always in, in the first place. But then in the last year, uh, uh, Brazil dropped to the second place uh, after, after the Philippines. Um, yeah, we are trying to understand why, what are the reasons for, for, for that to happen. Because now we have a president very, um, I'll say, uh, he contributes a lot to, 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 um, to environmental conflicts. I used to say that uh, Bolsonaro has three main uh, enemies or in his mind, and there are science, environment, and minorities. So I'm studying all of them. Uh, I'm studying all, all things he, um, he doesn't like to, um, to talk about or, or he tries to, to distrust. Uh, how to approach such a complex uh, scenario? We are talking about NGOs. These are the different actors, activists. We are talking about traditional communities. The media, media is an important, is such a, is, is a very important tool because a very important actor um, because in the regions where the social environmental conflicts take, uh, where they take place, when media is there, the conflicts, uh, they seem to, uh, to relief. They seem to, so the companies are not interested to have their names related to, um, to, to social environmental conflicts. When the media is there, when the state is there, things are a little, a little different. So it stayed in different levels, industries, mainly mining and agribusiness, and, but all of them, they are somehow related to, to science communication in a, in a, in a, in a, in a way, in, in a way of the, they are, they use science communication. All of them, they, uh, they use science, they, bah, they all use science communication as a tool to, to empower their storytelling. So the methodology, our data is drawn from the formal reports of four NGOs. Global Witness in UK, Comissão Pastoral da Terra in Brazil, in Brazil uh, Consejo de Redacción in Colombia, and Centro Mexicano de Derecho Ambiental, the Mexican Center for uh, environmental law. Why them? Because all of them have developed reports in social environmental conflicts. Uh, all of them have recurred to science directly or directly or indirectly to make the reports, a scientific tool itself. Uh, all of them work as a source of information for international human rights NGOs. Uh, the methodology, semi-structured interviews about their use of science communication. Six experts were interviewed with different backgrounds. So we had uh, journalists, one, one of them was a journalist, one other one a communicator, one, is, one was a philosopher, educator, and lawyer. Uh, oh, there is an important, another, oh, there is an, another thing to tell you is that, um, let me. Uh, th there is an important thing to tell you: the the institutional review board. So before making this kind of uh, of interviews, we we uh, we assured we 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 had a commitment to uh, to not identify this these people because they are they are being threatened, all of them. Uh, more than six hours of audio were, was, were recorded. 
So our theoretical framework was uh, we used the technologies of humility by Jasanov, uh, and she proposes um, the participation of experts, decision makings, and the public when we are talking about science. So what's the purpose? Framing, we are, we are talking about a very complex, as I, as I was trying to, to show you, a very complex um, scenario, so different actors. Uh, and we have to frame it. We have to, to take a picture of it to, to, to understand. So we can't, I was, uh, I was talking to, to Paul before, <laughs> before my presentation. He's interested in Ecuador. So if, uh, and there was, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you one of, um, I, an interesting uh, purpose of an NGO to, to, to frame this, uh, this problems. So who will be hurt? The vulnerability, and we are talking about traditional communities in, in Latin America. Who benefits? There are people benef uh, being, uh, so taking advantage of this, uh, this uh, conflict. And how can we know? So what's so what what they're learning? What what the NGOs are learning from 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 this process? Uh, what what the traditional communities are learning? What academics are learning when they when they work with um, traditional communities? So and we notice that there is a a relationship between public engagement uh, of science and activism. Uh, because there is a conception that passion and science are mutual excluding events, and for me, they are not. Uh, this is uh, Deborah Denise, one of our most famous anthropologists in, in Brazil, and she says uh, she does activism. This expression is, is used by uh, Bolsonaro's supporters, uh, to, to distrust journalists and academics. Uh, only uh, a naive uh, ideologist confounds uh, liability with neutrality. I'm a feminist and I do science. My research are reliable, are trustful, and uh, validated by the scientific method. I, don't, I, I just don't pretend to be neutral. Uh, so some professors from social science fields, for example, are able to present solid data obtained by scientific criteria and promote activities to raise awareness for the importance of their research fields causes. That's, uh, so, uh, they are, so their research fields can also be their causes. And uh, here uh, I'd like to show you some experiences in Brazil uh, specifically in Brazil, I'm sorry, uh, but Brazil is is uh, is the, the the main subject when you talk about environmental uh, or about environment in in the world. I would say because of the recent fires, because of the the, and in Brazil, uh, what Bolsonaro is doing is to um, to try to destroy what was built in the in the last I would say 30 years. Uh, on environmental policies. This is, uh, that, this is a professor giving, uh, uh, so teaching in a square in Sao Paulo. Uh, it's a movement called Engaged Scientists. Uh, so Professor Pedro Jacobi is from the, the uh, environmental, environmental science uh, at USP, the, far, the, the environmental science department in, in USP, Universidade de Sao Paulo. And he's giving a public a public class. Uh, so, the Sociedade Brasileira para o Progresso da Ciência, what would correspond to uh, the, the 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 American Association for Advancement of Science, the triple triple AS, they are asking people to record some um, some videos and send them, uh, uh, showing what what. What their so what their researches are being affected, how their researches are being affected by the cuts, uh, how the cuts affect the researches in in Brazil. So Maré Ambiental uh, would would be like I'll translate as uh, environmental uh, type is uh, is a, a response an answer for uh, 
the, the threatens on environmental policies. So there are people from ICMBio, Instituto Chico Mendes de, Preservação, de Conservação Ambiental, um, IBAMA, uh, it's another institute responsible for controlling and, and, uh, and um, control, for example, ICMBio is responsible for, for, for controlling the national, national reserves. Uh, IBAMA is a very important research uh, institution uh, regarding the, the environment. And they say, my ideology is uh, the forest uh, stood up, uh, clean water, fresh air, and, and food with no poison. Uh, some other examples. Uh, this is uh, ASEMA, another um, association created to defend environmental, Brazilian environmental policies, uh, denouncing that the, 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 the directors of of ICMBio, one of the main, the most important uh, institutions for uh, conservation in Brazil, they were substituted for uh, uh, members of the military pol uh, police in Brazil. Uh, this is the, this is another this is um, um, a poster where. Uh, in which they are uh, asking people to defend the, the, the public policies, the social environmental uh, public policies in Brasilia, in a park. Uh, they are asking people to go to defend the, the, the environment. And this is a press release um, inviting the press to a breakfast in the park. So they are trying to make, to, to uh, so the institutions in Brazil are trying to go to the, to public areas to defend to defend the environment and to raise to raise awareness of of science and technology. So especially in times when part of citizens uh, is denying sciences, flat Earth, anti-vaccine, anti-anti-vaccine uh, movements, anti-global anti warming evidence, and so forth, is a part of scientists scientists' duty to make a strong counterpoint in favor of scientific evidences. Uh, as a human activity, science is not free of failures, but is the best way humanity has developed to interpret the world and its environment. Uh, both engaged scientists and activists want to persuade or raise awareness on the importance of their fields and causes. Let me have some water. Uh, in the case of science, Related to environmental issues, economists, biologists, geographers, lawyers, sociologists, and many other experts are participating in the debate through NGOs. So what we notice, uh, contacting this um, this um, um, NGOs, is that they 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 are like a bridge between traditional communities and academics, uh, experts in different fields. So some traditional community leaders are reported by the NGOs as interested in taking courses in formal knowledge institutions, such as universities or research companies. Leaders are capable to ally their traditional knowledge with scientific formal criteria to build their speeches on solid basis about the environment. This is another thing every, every one of the of the experts interviewed, they they told us, uh, they 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 reported us this uh, relation. So media is another component of this puzzle. Uh, media coverage is responsible for calling attention of authorities and spreading information that can upset big farmers and big companies' interests. And journalists are threatened as uh, as well if they call attention for social environmental conflicts. In Brazil, one, one specific journalist, <clears throat> he denounced what, what was now called the Dia do Fogo, the day of fire in Brazil. So when we, when we started, uh, so when the Brazilian uh, uh, scientific institutions, mainly INPE, which corresponds to, to, to uh, NASA here, uh, when they started, uh, uh, sending uh, alerts and saying everyone that the the fires were increasing. Bolsonaro dismissed Ricardo Galvão. He said, 
Ricardo Galvão was telling lies, uh, and uh, it was harmful for Brazil's image. Uh, so releasing the, the scientific data was was harmful to to Brazil. Uh, and one specific journalist uh, in in the Amazon forest, he denounced that there were there were uh, there was um, an agreement, or there were the farmers, the big farmers were um, on WhatsApp uh, uh, planning to to set fires on 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 the forest on the Amazon forest um, on on August 10, and then we can. The data um, I should have, I should have uh, offered you some of this uh, some of this data, but yeah, and and this guy is being threat threatened by 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 the farmers in in the regions in the in the region. <clears throat> so Global Witness, uh, as I said, is a a, a British NGOs, and uh, I hear I only I've, I'm only showing you the last reports, but Global Witness since 2002. Uh, they make uh, annual reports about uh, social environmental defenders. They call land and environmental defenders. There are some differences between the different me methodologies. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna show you later. But the NGO Global Witness produces annual reports specifically about land defenders defenders killings since 2014. Global Witness has uh, collected data about this issue with various associated partners and a specific criteria since 2002. In this period, uh, Global Witness exposed an alarming fact. 1,733 environmental human rights defenders have lost their lives. Uh, there is a very important uh, thing to, to tell you is that Latin America is the most dangerous place for for environmental activists, but we were expecting to, to see Africa as, uh, so dealing or uh, um, um, with very close uh, numbers uh, to Latin America. But with all the NGOs, mainly uh, Global Witness said is that uh, it's hard to get, to get data from, from Africa. They are they are close. It's not it's not easy for the civil society to make reports and to denounce uh, uh, what's happening in their in their countries. So global witness recognize global witness recognized that despite of all efforts, the amount of killings must be much more than the reports uh, reveal. And one of the quotes was: "In terms of campaigns impact, we've noticed that the land defenders campaign has much more attention." than the problems that there are behind the conflicts, mining, logging, corruption. We think, that's, we think that sometimes scientific evidences or super detailed investigation about the problems happening in a certain sector does not have uh, the impact as showing the people are dying because of it. Uh, Comissão Pastoral da Terra, the, the the report they made they they make every year since middle eighties is uh, conflictos no campo, uh, with, I would say uh, conflicts in the country. This is um, in Brazil it it, it got uh, so you went viral this uh, message uh, before Bolsonaro's election. It says ninguém solta mão de ninguém. It means uh, nobody nobody um, um, nobody sorry. That's it. Thank you, Paul. Uh, so CPT was created in uh, 1975 during the dictatorship regime. Another important thing is that uh, the experts in the at the NGOs they are um, they are verifying that there are very there there are a lot of. Um, uh, similarities between the dictatorship period and and the the, the period the, the time we are living now in 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 Brazil, and the conflicts they are they are the same. So it's uh, so the government is allowing people to go there and take the lands. So the message is like you can go and nothing is going to happen to you, and that's what 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 happened during the dictatorship regime in Brazil. So. Uh, Comissão Pastoral da Terra was created as a response to the serious uh, situation 
faced by rural workers, squatters, and peons, especially in the Amazon, uh, exploited in the work, subjected to conditions analogous to slave labor, and uh, expelled from their lands they occupied. Some, some more quotes from the, the experts. Uh, we want them to assert themselves as protagonists. That's the reason why the peasants themselves and the CPT agents seek science where science sits. Uh, if you are not anchored in science, legitimized by what the scientific evidence points out, you are mis mischaracterized. You are disrespected. The result is the opposite effect of what you intend to do in terms of reporting. Uh, this is another picture from uh, Cesar Magalhães in the middle, um, in the middle 90s. And uh, so the movements, the, it's, the, this flag is from the landless workers movement. Uh, and what, what um, Comissão Pastoral da Terra is saying is now the most, the, 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 the groups that are being threatened right now are not anymore the movements like the landless workers. Uh, there are, so the, the, the people who is, who is being threatened in the last years are traditional communities because the invasions, um, the invasions from, uh, 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 so um, made by uh, the, the workless, uh, landless uh, workers movement is not, is not an issue anymore. Consejo de Redacción, Colombia, Tierra de, de Resistentes, Land of Resistance. Uh, this is an NGO, this is, this is actually, this is a, a report, uh, sorry, Consejo de Redacción is an NGO, uh, and Tierra de Resistentes is uh, their inform, the, their report. So journalists from seven countries in Latin America, they started to work together, making stories, going to the, to the places where the conflicts were, were taking place. Uh, and they tried to report them, to, to tell their, their stories. Um, so despite of the fact that Land of Resistance uh, is eminently uh, a science and investigative journalism uh, project, uh, they've had no scientific guidance. So all 16 journalists have consulted scientists for writing the stories. So they understood that it's impossible to explain the conflicts if you, if you don't have the, the support of, um, of, uh, of scientists or experts. <clears throat> uh, so most of us will define ourselves as journalists on social issues. But we all understood from the beginning that we should explain the value of this uh, ecosystem, ecos, ecosystems. Uh, and for that, there is a work of scientific journalism behind. <clears throat> all of them have a complete understanding of what they defend. They understood that this territory, this environment, and that they defend has its value. Uh, Traditional communities have a clear understanding, not necessarily from a scientific point of view, but they have a clear understanding of the value of their territories and ecosystems, uh, their own traditions, and their own knowledge as a community and as a, an ethnic group, uh, and also the value of defending them. They are doing a work of resistance, which is cult uh, cultural, social, and of course, environmental. Uh, another, another expert from the same NGO said, I believe that a major uh, dif uh, difficulty that science journalism has in Latin America is that people know that we live in extremely rich countries, naturally. Uh, we, learn it, we, learn, we learn it at school. He was telling me, we, because I'm from, from Brazil and I, we, see, we studied it. I, we have here <laughs> Jaime, uh, um, most people, sorry, um, you and I know that we have the Amazon. It's not a secret, but people in our countries have never been there. Uh, but they know 
they know it's there. They know it's important. What we often need as citizens is to understand as and as journalists explain, what is the value of these collective assets? And the last, the last report, uh, Informe sobre la situación de las personas defensoras de los derechos humanos ambientales uh, from the Mexican uh, Center uh, of Environmental Law. Uh, the traditional communities look for us to provide legal advice in the case of defense that they are carrying from the mega project, the mega project or whatever was the reason of, of, <clears throat> of the, co the conflict. Uh, several universities and academic institutions share information, give their opinion with us. We take inputs of studies that they have done and that is how uh, it, they complement our, our, work, our work. Uh, the collaboration of academic experts and the communication of science can be part of the solution to the conflicts, uh, not entirely because the political and, and economic powers are quite, are, are quite strong, but it's part of the strategy of convincing people about the importance of the preservation of both territories and traditions. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> give you some of our conclusions. I forgot to, to, to say that. We started this, uh, pro this research six months ago. We are finishing our second article. Uh, as I said, we are preparing a panel uh, to, to bring uh, NGOs into the environmental debate uh, and to, science, to the science, science uh, and technology debate. Uh, so the NGOs that deal with social environmental conflicts uh, tend to combine the reputation of science and the prominence of media in a mutual symbiotic way when both benefit. Uh, the scientific support from the reports and the communication campaigns try to get space in media and accomplish at least two main goals, denouncing a critical situation of people being displaced, threatened, and even killed, and raising awareness of possible partners and sponsors. Of course, the NGOs are also thinking in, uh, in uh, increase their, their nets, their contacts, and, and be funded, of course. All NGOs described, uh, de described the conflicts uh, with the necessary doses of partiality. Uh, science emphasized the importance of preservation, and the journalistic pers perspective alerts uh, to the necessity of decreasing the environmental defender number of killings. Uh, the vast majority of social environmental conflicts take place in rural areas from, uh, from uh, far from large cities. The risk of Af Af Afghanistanism is a concept uh, uh, developed by uh, Hungerford and Lammert is evident. Afghanistanism is, is like something ha is happening too far away from me. I don't. It's it's hard for for science journalists and NGOs and academics in Brazil to, uh, to make people understand how, how, how hard it is because it's far from, it's happening far away from, from, their, from their realities. So the Latin American population is not aware of the alarming numbers of threats and killings perpetrate, per, perpetrated far from the big cities. Even me, I'm a, I'm a science journalist, uh, I know Brazil is a very, um, a very um, violent country, but I was not aware of these uh, this numbers. They are alarming. They are, they are unbelievable. Uh, this is another picture from, taken by uh, Cesar Magalhães. Uh, it's also in Pará. A little, so in the, in the this is in, in the, in the early uh, 2000s, uh, and it's so it's one of the one of the victims, of course, the cross, uh, and 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 the kids playing, uh, not playing, but it's part of their their reality to, uh, uh, yeah, to, to deal with these uh, situations. So, in Cesar Magalhães, a photographer said, "I really I recently stopped working in an indigenous village." where the chief is scheduled to die, precisely because of an agrarian 
uh, conflict against woodcutters uh, who invaded their land and go unpunished. The situation now is uh, the, 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 the situation now with this wave of burns has worsened even more. Uh, <clears throat> this is another picture. So I was trying to, uh, to illustrate, to make you understand, to, to, to bring all, this, all these kind of things that I was telling you to, to in, into images. So this is, uh, this is a, a Pira uh, a small kid. Uh, it's a tribe in the Amazon forest. The picture is, uh, was taken by, um, by uh, Anderson Stevens, a Brazilian photographer. Uh, he's a, a Kurumi and the, very close to, the, to, to, to his tribe, uh, the, 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 fire, the firemen and women were trying to, to um, distinguish the, the fires. So the traditional communities are very concerned about uh, the growth of fires. The, hunt, the hunting, for example, is, ha is harmed with fires. Uh, they know what animals uh, they know what animals they can hunt at a specific month of the year. Today, many died or are fleeing. The fish in the rivers are dying. This is another testimony from this, uh, from the, uh, from the, from uh, Anderson, Anderson Stevens. Uh, so they are getting skin diseases because of smoke. They are very close to the fire points. And it was an amazing and unusual, unusual experience doing a story about a factual problem, trying to show people what is really happening and the impact of, of it. Uh, trying to get the best image to represent that on the Sony Stevens. So, sorry, I'm three minutes uh, late, but I'm going to finish my, my presentation with two uh, Latin Americans, as I am here in the Latin America studies program, talking to a lot of uh, people interested in Latin America. I'm gonna finish with uh, Eduardo Galeano. Scientists say we are made of atoms, but a little bird told me that we are made of stories. And I really like this, uh, this quote, uh, because of course I believe in science and I know we are made of, out of atoms, uh, made of atoms, but I'm interested in, in, their, in their stories. And uh, this is uh, Diego Rivera. Uh, the true civilization will be the harmony of men and land and among men. Uh, this is one is it's in one of his uh, murals in the secret uh, the public secretary of education in Mexico City. And that's it. This is these are my my contacts. Uh, and thank you so much.